You know that new movie coming out? Yeah, that one. It looks pretty good to me, but anything with a Marvel logo on it means I'll see it. So who knows? So with the teaser trailer just released, I decided that I should talk a bit about Ant-Man. But which Ant-Man is this? There are a number of them, but we need to figure out who this one is. After some research, I found three main Marvel characters who are commonly referred to as the Ant-Man. These names are Henry or Hank Pym, Scott Lang, and Eric O'Grady. So which one is the Ant-Man as seen in the trailer? Let's take a look at their origins, shall we? Hank Pym was the first Ant-Man, and developed a serum that could shrink objects. When he started human testing, this genius scientist tested on himself, a real Einstein. But it actually worked without any negative side effects. His real genius stroke was when he left the antidote, no pun intended, on the windowsill. He later went to an anthill and seeked the help of a friendly ant that allowed him to climb on his back and carried him to the antidote. After his experience, he became obsessed with ants and made a special helmet so he could talk to them. The next Ant-Man is Scott Lang, who was a petty thief until he became Ant-Man. He stole the Ant-Man gear from old Hank and used it to save his sick and dying daughter. Apparently, Hank liked his moxie and let Scott become the new Ant-Man. The final Ant-Man is someone named Eric O'Grady. He's a low-level S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who was able to get his hands on some Ant-Man armor and use it to his advantage. Sometimes he likes to take matters into his own hands, but now he's a little less rash. So from the trailer, we know that Ant-Man has a daughter he cares for, check, a criminal background, check, and the name Scott was used in the trailer, check. So we know that the Ant-Man is Scott Lang, the martial artist and used to be thief. Ant-Man has the ability to change in size, like some sort of human grow your own dinosaur and water toy. His strength increases when he gets larger, but stays the same when he is smaller. The only way that this is possible is that he would compress his mass into an extremely dense version of himself though. That's not what happens. In the comics, he uses pin particles that shrink objects down to the smaller form and transfer the mass into an extra dimensional universe. So even though it appears otherwise in the comics, a small Ant-Man would realistically be even easier to squash than his namesake. But let's take a look at the density again. 6 foot tall or 1.8 meter Ant-Man shrinks down to his favorite size of 1.5 inches or 3.8 centimeters. The average human density is 985 kilograms per cubic meter, or about 2,170 pounds per cubic meter. Since the Ant-Man is more fit than the average man, he probably has a density of about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, or about 2,205 pounds per cubic meter. To all our US viewers out there, just think of a meter as a yard. It's not exact, but it's close enough that you'll get the idea. Ant-Man has a very similar look to that of an average human, so we can assume that he has the same volume, which is 2.9 cubic feet or 0.9 cubic meters. Having a volume of 1.8 centimeters, which would result in a density of 46.6 kilograms per centimeter, or about 102.7 pounds per centimeter. This is more than 200 times as dense as iridium, one of the densest elements known to man. His converted strength would handle his weight, but it would concentrate so heavily on an individual point he would smash through multiple layers of rock and even metals like steel and titanium. He couldn't go swimming without drowning because he would sink so fast. He would probably kill you just by standing on your shoulder. Now we know what happens to him when he shrinks, but what happens to him when he gets bigger? According to Marvel Dictionary, Marvel makes Ant-Man to be able to grow to about 100 feet tall without straining himself to do so, and can press 50 tons. This means that he can easily press 600 pounds, or about 272 kilos, when he's a normal sized. The most ever unequipped press is just over 700 pounds, done by a man who weighed almost double Ant-Man. So we can be able to assume that Ant-Man has the best strength to weight ratio of any normal man. I said NORMAL man. You go away, Thor. Despite being able to bench 50 tons, he would just collapse in on himself because he weighs almost 400 tons, which is four times what he can lift. His legs would be able to almost get the job done, each being able to lift up to 75 tons. But he would never be able to stand up with that much weight. One step and whoom, down he goes. If he were to weigh the same as if he were still human, which he is due to the law of conservation of mass, he'd be less dense than air and simply float away before he even got started fighting. Though the pin particles draw new mass from other dimensions, he would just fall over and cause the ground to shake a bit. Okay, so now we know what would happen to Ant-Man and the environment around him because of its density and mass, but what happened to all the cells within Ant-Man? This may seem like an odd question, but bear with me. If Ant-Man's cells grew or shrank as he grew or shrank, there would be absolutely no way for the cells to continue functioning because of the square cubed law. This states that an object with a constant shape becomes larger while still retaining that shape. The ratio of the enlargement of the surface area would shape the volume to a 2 to 3 scale. This means that if Ant-Man shrank and decided to eat a nice bowl of fruit, his cells would import too much of the glucose to the grass for the shrunken bodies to hold. Note that this process of cellular respiration happens at a constant rate. It cannot be sped up. 
This would cause Ant-Man to become a ticking time bomb as the cells between the environment and him around it. Now we have seen the spontaneous death of Ant-Man as he shrinks. Let's see the slow death of the Ant-Man's growth. As he grew, the cells in his body would not have enough surface area for their volume. Now for some biology 101. The way a cell gets the materials it needs for its function is through the membrane of the cell. But since the membrane is a surface, not a space, like the interior of the cell, the cell would obey the same trend as in shrinking situation, but in reverse. The cell would have far too little cellular material for it to stay alive. This would cause a cell to still die, but at a much slower rate, which means more pain for the giant Ant-Man. So in conclusion, Ant-Man would destroy the Earth in a smaller form and destroy himself as a giant. Kind of exactly opposite what you thought, huh? Whether he's drowning in a puddle after a drizzle or getting blown away by a cool morning breeze, remember, he will always have the worst superhero name ever. Thanks for watching, and remember to like this video and leave a comment on what hero you would like to see perform in the real world next. For the Superhero Scientist, signing off. Hey you, person who stayed after the actual video. Yeah, you. No, don't go! Please stay. Thanks for being here. If you think that this channel is a good idea and you'd like to see more videos like this, please share this video. We would really appreciate it if you could help this channel grow. All you have to do is tweet, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr saying something like, Hey, check out this channel. The more people that view our videos, the more videos we're going to make. Thanks again for watching and helping us make this channel grow.